Welcome back. I am Paul Fritz, and this is video number three of our run cycle series. And today we're going to go ahead and finish up getting our run cycle done. What I've done is I went ahead and finished up all but the last two of the keyframes from using my background reference here. So this running reference is everything from one through 13, so 12 frames. And Using it, I created or set my character up. So if I zoom in here, you can see that this is the character. Okay, and she's kind of matched up at frame five right now, but she's actually on 11, which is the opposite leg forward for the up frame. So what I want to do is kind of talk a little bit about each of these frames here. As you can see, one through 13, one and seven and 13. So one and seven are six apart and they're the opposite leg forward. It's the same for two and eight, three and nine, and so forth. So you just add six to this number and then go to the opposite side and then just flip the arms and legs. And if we took a look at this, if I zoom in a little bit here on my character, and right down here on the character control, which this video is right in the way, let's move that out of the way for a minute, you can see that we have these little controllers. And for the control layer that comes with this Mixamo controller, if I turn off the visibility, you can see that it goes away. Okay, so now I'm gonna zoom in. And if I jump back and forth between five and 11, you can see that they are identical, except for the fact that the arms, legs, and body all rotate to the opposite side. Okay, and that's kind of the goal of trying to get our run cycle so that each side of the body is symmetrical. And that's what we want to have happen. And we can see that over here in the front view as well. If I jump back and forth. Okay. So the way we do that is pretty simple. I'll take uh, five here, for example, again. If we take a look at, turning the controllers back on. If we take a look here and I select the foot, for example. We can see that these are my numbers here in my channel box. Okay. And we have all positives this time. But if I jump to the same, well, the forward foot, so if I jump to frame number 11 and select the other forward foot, you can see that my Y and my Z are flipped. They're now negative numbers here in the front instead of positive. And the reason is that if we had them negative and positive, uh, or we also have a negative X up here, I forgot about that. So negative X controls the way, the direction around the, Y axis here. So if I turn on the grid and we can kind of see the dark line right here underneath our character, right here is where our X and Y meet. So this is going to be zero right here. And anything on one side, if you remember your basic math, is that this is going to be a positive. Anything on the opposite side of zero is negative. So we want to make sure that we adjust for that when we copy from one side to the other. And that's basically what I've done is and I'll demonstrate that here with frames 6 and 12 in just a minute. And then we also do the same things for the arms. And this one is specifically rotation. So if I select the right arm up here, when we go to frame 11, this arm should take on this form right here of the left arm. So the right should look like the left. So if I jump over to 11, we can see that it does. And what I want to do is take a look at these numbers. If I select the top one here, on the left arm, go to frame, and we take a look at the numbers here first before we do this. So we take a look at these numbers, you see that the Y and the Z, a negative and a positive. Typically, those are the ones that we're going to flip when we go to the opposite side of the body. So five, if I go to 11, and then I select the opposite arm, the right arm, that's now forward and up, we can see that that's true. We have a positive and a negative here. The Y is now positive and the Z is now negative. Whereas before, back over here, the Y is negative and the Z is positive. The exact same numbers, they're just negatives or positives of the other side. So that's pretty much what we're doing. We're just going to copy and paste to the other side. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that with this last frame right here. I'm going to do this with frame number six. So here in the background is my reference image. I'm going to select that reference image. Right now I don't have it locked out, so it should be pretty easy to select it. I just go ahead and bump down here to six, kind of line it up a little bit, something like that. And 
Do the same thing for the other one. Let me go ahead and lock this one back down. Unlock the other one. Go ahead and slide it just a little bit over. And I like to actually put the character next to the one I'm working with. So I'm going to put her in front of five. That way I can see the way number six looks. So I know I'm on frame six. I want to set her up like this. All right. I'm going to go ahead and lock that back down over here. Okay. So now I can't accidentally select it. But I can select my character. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here, select the foot. I'm going to pull the foot up, kind of align it up out here. Get it the rest of the way in there as close as I can. It doesn't have to be identical again. Even though this is the exact same character, I have kind of done some adjustments. Every time I go through it, it's never going to be 100% identical to the, the previous way I did it. And if you're working with a different character, yours is going to probably line up differently as well. Also, this is uh, more coming towards the contact. I just came off the up, so I need to make sure that I push her down a little bit. So we should have more of a down kind of going along here. Something like that. All right. And now I've got the feet lined up. I've got her hips about the right height. What I want to do is I want to come in here and I'm going to go ahead and take care of the rotation right now. So I'm going to select right here at the hips. Looks like I already got that selected. All right, so there's also a, a rotation of the body. The hips, when the leg comes forward, it rotates in that direction of the foot coming forward. And on the body, it goes and it rotates in the opposite direction, the upper body. Because as the arm comes forward, the chest rotates out that direction. So there's kind of this twisting happening from the hips up to the upper body. I want to make sure I convey that, try to capture it here in my character. So if I jump back to frame 6, I can see that that rotation for Y is at 12. So I'm going to go back to 6 here. It's at 13, or rather 8.4 here. And then frame 7, I have it at almost 3. So, and that's how I should have been three because that's where I set it up, but it must have changed on me. Okay, so, so if I'm going to have, go ahead and pop down, and if I take a look as the body rotates, I start to have less and less rotation as I come back to neutral for here down. So basically, the arms are straight on the side of either side of the body, so there's almost no rotation in the body at frame eight. So as we roll into seven, we're going to have a little bit less, and then so here at six, we're going to have less than we have at five. 5 is a 12. Here we're at 8. I'm just going to go ahead and make that 8 here completely. And this is a positive number. When I go to 12, it's going to be a negative number. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the upper body. I'm going to grab it right here in the midriff. And you can see we have a negative number in there. So a negative 12. Negative 6 there. Negative 17 there. So, I'm going to put this at a negative 10. We can come back and fine tune it as we move forward, but we got to remember we're slowly rotating back the other direction. Don't want anything to be jarring and snapping. We want kind of an even flow. All right, so now I've got the feet, I've got the body pretty much adjusted. We got to do the arms. So, I'm going to go ahead here and just align my arms up with my background image a little bit more. So, I'm going to rotate that back just a little bit more and I'm going to give her arm a little bit more rotation up. You can kind of see how that looks there. I want to make sure that the arm goes through a cycle. So here at frame five is higher. We're bringing it and bring it back down at six, seven, and then eight. So I think that works okay right there. And let's see more of a inward rotation maybe not as it starts to come out we also have to think about the arm coming out from the body as it comes across the body and back down towards the side i think that's going to work probably just going to leave those alone on the shoulder on the elbow rotation so what i'm going to do is even though i didn't put a key in there i didn't really rotate it right now i'm going to hit s on the key frame because we need to be able to copy something if there's nothing in here you can't copy it and then on the opposite arm same thing. Let me make sure I got the elbow over the shoulder there. Got that. Put the elbow here. Hit S on the keyboard just to set that keyframe. So now I have everything pretty much done right there. Okay. 
that is the first setup there. Now what I want to do is I want to copy these exact numbers over to frame 12. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to start down here at the feet. This is the front foot. I want to make sure that I get the, the same numbers off of the front foot for frame six. I'm going to come here, select the front foot, right click. I'm going to copy, go to 12, front foot, right click, and I'm going to paste right here. Okay, and this is where we can start to see that we have some things going on. Right here, you see how the leg popped out? That's because on the X, we went in a positive direction, so away from the zero. We actually wanted to go towards the zero. Okay, and now there's also a rotation that happened here on the foot, which is the rotation Y. I'm going to spin that leg back a little bit, and... There's also this rotation that happened outward this direction. Depending on how you're wanting your character to run, you can fine tune these. My numbers aren't necessarily the numbers that are gonna work for you. And again, I just need to make sure that I am trying to be consistent throughout my character. The foot, I want it to kind of land a little bit flat. She's a toe runner, not a heel runner or a ball to foot runner. This is a sprint based off of the speed that she's moving, so I'm going to try to keep the feet a little bit more aligned. Okay, so I've got the left foot done, and in the background image, you can see that it doesn't quite line up because these are opposite, right? And I'm also on frame five instead of six. I'm using it as a side reference. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing for the other foot. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back to frame six. This foot is the one I want to copy from here. I'm going to copy it. Go back to frame 12, select that opposite foot, and paste it as well. And same thing up here. See how the leg really twisted out right here? Again, that is our X. So this is going to be negative this time because I want it to go further away from the zero. And for the rotation of the Y, we have a rotation of the foot. We may or may not need to change this. Let's see how that looks. Uh, that's a little bit much. I think we're just going to go ahead and adjust the Z for this one. And now select the Z. There we go. A little bit of a rotation outward. Okay, so now if I jump back and forth between the two, we should have a very similar. We also have to realize that our camera, even though it is an orthographic camera, Positioning of our character and things may make it difficult to see that they're exactly identical, but they're very close in our view frame here. All right, so that looks pretty good. Okay, now the last thing we need to do, let me see, well, actually, we've got several things we need to do. Let's go ahead and copy the numbers right here off of frame six for the, for the hip. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this because we also don't forget we changed the height. So we want to make sure we grab, capture that. I'm going to paste this. She comes down a little bit, but the rotation went the wrong direction. This needs to be a negative in here. Rotate her back in the right way. And then we also want to do the same thing for this number here back on six. We're going to copy it for her midriff. Copy that. Go back to 12 and we're going to paste that in there. And this is a positive number. So we want to make sure we put this as positive. Again, we want to make sure how it looks. We should be having a little bit of a body rotation there, just a slight amount. Okay. And now let's go ahead and do the arms real quick. I'm going to start with the left arm. So I'm going to start over here at frame six. I'm going to copy it. We go to frame 12, go to the opposite arm, and I'm going to paste it. Okay. It really makes the arm look really bad, broken. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to swap, swap these around. I'm going to get rid of that negative. And now I'm going to come in here. And it's not going to look identical until I also get the elbow corrected as well. And I'm going to put a negative in there. And it looks pretty pretty close, but it's up too high. we got to adjust for that elbow, remember? So now we're going to come back to frame six. I'm going to copy this elbow. Go back to frame 12 and paste it on the opposite arm. And then again, it looks very broken. So let's go ahead and fix this. And 
now it should pop up into the right position. So let's go ahead and take a look. It should be up and across the body like that. Looks very close. Looks identical. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the opposite arm. So here at six, I want this arm now pasted over to my left arm for frame 12. I'm gonna go ahead and put that tool right there. Click on this arm at frame six. I'm going to copy the right arm, go back to 12, and I'm going to select the left arm and see there's no keyframe on here, so I know I haven't messed up. <laughs> and I'm gonna select and paste. All right, now again, put in the opposites here. That should become a positive, and this should become a negative, and it's gonna look really messed up until I also get the elbow. Okay, that's not too far off. But let's go ahead and get that elbow done. Come over here, I'm going to copy it. Go to 12, select the other elbow, paste it, okay. And whoa, that looks really broken. So let's go ahead and swap these around again. Looks like I'm torturing my poor character here. And there we go. Now if I pop back and forth between six and 12, it should be identical. Six and 12, six, 12, there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna hit play, see what we have. One thing, it looks kind of choppy and that's because I haven't push this down. When we're doing a cycle like this, frame 13 and frame 1 are identical. So we don't want to have that same one. We don't have 13 included when we're running our run cycle in our loop. And it looks pretty decent. A lot of head flop back and forth, and that's something I'm going to have to fix. So what we're going to do now is come in here and at frames, so in the up frame at frame 5 and frame 11, that's where my significant amount of up is at, and also my most significant amount of body twist. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to select the head and I should probably select it at the neck right there. And I'm going to rotate that a little bit more towards center and probably something like that. All right. So negative, I'm going to make that just a regular negative one. Try that again. Okay, make that negative one. And so I know that over here on frame 11, that's going to be a positive one. And that was the wrong one. So rotate Y I wanted. Okay. And let's see what happened here. So there, there. That's just a little bit more than I wanted. So let's go ahead and try that again. And let's see here. It's going to be a large negative number. But we're going to go ahead and go with that. Sometimes you just got to come in here and make the adjustments, try to clean it up a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and hide the references, the controllers. Now there's some fine tuning we have to do, and that's going to be done with the graph editor. That'll be in the next uh, video, and we'll go over how to kind of clean this up, smooth it out a little bit using our graph editor and some of the other tools that we have here in Maya. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe to my channel, Paul Fritz Animation, and I'll see you next time.